Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about labeling and inoculating um, microbiology plates. This is a blood auger plate, this is a chocolate auger plate, and this is a McConkie auger plate. I have taken them out of the refrigerator, they have come to room temperature. Um, I have wiped the condensation off of the bottoms of them so that my marker can be clearly uh, seen and doesn't basically wash away. Um, we want to always mark around the rim of the back of the plate. Um, the reason we don't mark the top of the plate is because tops can go missing um, or be separated when uh, someone at the clinical facility is looking at them and deciding um, you know, what an organism is, they might uh, get mixed up. So we want to make sure that anything uh, dealing with labeling the patient is going to be on the actual plate itself so it will never get separated from the organism. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, I'm going to label my plates. So this is a fake patient. So the name of the patient, last and first name, and then we're going to do the patient's uh, medical record number. In class, you don't necessarily need to do this unless I say it's unknown one or unknown two. Um, and then you're going to do the date and your initials. And so you would do that for all of the plates. And notice that you can kind of see it through the plate. Um, if you held it up to the light, uh, you most likely could, um, but we keep it on the rim so that the growth of the organism on the plate, if there's hemolysis or anything, um, there won't be this ton of writing uh, in the way of trying to hold it up to the light. So again, we're going to do last name, first name, the medical record number or the unknown number that I give you in class. Then we're going to do the date and your initials. So one last time, um, last name, first name, <clears throat> medical record number, date, and initials. Okay, so the order that we are doing this is a really big deal, okay? This is an enrichment auger, um, an enriched auger, so it's got all these nutrients in it so that basically everything is going to grow on it in an aerobic setting um, or capnophile setting. So increase CO2 or a normal incubator. So we're thinking facultative anaerobes or aerobes are going to be um, the organisms that are going to grow on these plates because of the way that they're incubated and the way that they're made. This is a chocolate auger plate and it's for your fastidious organisms like um, Haemophilus. Neisseria likes to grow on it too. Sometimes they can be a little finicky. Um, and then this is the McConkie auger and this is for gram negative. Um, basically gram negative rods really show up on here um, if they're a fermenter of sugars. And so we're thinking like the family of the Enterobacteraceae family. And um, those are fecal flora, normal flora. And so what we're gonna do is we're just going to act like we have a specimen. So I'm going to get a swab. And this is not a normal swab, um, a normal patient swab would look like this, okay? Usually there's two in the top, um, but you'd have a, um, a nurse or clinician, whomever, a nurse aide, uh, would swab a patient's wound, throat, tonsils, whatever, and then put it in this tube with the transfer media in it so that the organism survives and they would label it with the patient's name and all the information, um, such as the date, collection, time, the patient's medical record number, and all that. Um, <clears throat> notice that this is plastic. It's not a wooden shaft because the resin in the wood um, can kill organisms, and the, uh, the organism has nutrients in this um, tra <laughs> 
this uh, auger in here that will keep it alive and not dry it out. So I'm not gonna open this. Um, I'm gonna use a fake one. So this is just a regular swab, okay? And say I was doing, um, I was inoculating from a real specimen, I would do this in a hood. I didn't wanna do this in the hood because I didn't want um, the air flow to possibly uh, cause a problem with the vocals. Um, so I'm gonna take this swab and we don't know where exactly the organisms are on the swab. They could be on the tip, they could be on one side, they could be on all sides. So um, making sure that that's not an issue, uh, when we put it on here, we're gonna roll in what's considered the first quadrant, okay? So we roll on there to make sure that we're going to uh, get organism on there. And so we do the blood first, then the chocolate, okay? Then the McConkie. And the reason we do it in that order is so that we won't have any transfer of inhibitory contents from the McConkie um, onto the one that should grow everything. So next we're going to take an inoculating loop. You always shake it out so you're not inoculating all the inoculating loops with um, bacteria that's all over the place. And we're going to streak it out. So we're going to um, go and make where we put our swab to be the first quadrant. And we're gonna do it in a four quadrant series. So we're going to spread out what we just put on the plate and don't be shy, you wanna get both sides of the plate, okay? This is like jello, so if you're really, really hard with, um, with the loop and you really dig into it, uh, you're gonna cause the plate to just um, get all dug up, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Uh, so we, we streak the first quadrant, we're going to turn it to the left, and we're going to go in one time, two times, and streak out, okay? And we're gonna turn again, go in one times, two times, streak out, and then one last time, we're gonna do a little swiggle, okay? So we have one, two, three, four quadrants. This is, the first quadrant is considered the heavy area. So if you were going to do um, any susceptibility testing, you would put the, um, you would put the, um, <laughs> you would put the disc, the susceptibility disc in the first quadrant because you wanna make sure that all of the um, growth that is there or isn't there isn't due to the um, amount of organism that's actually there. We will continue in another, in another video.